Hey friends, Dylan Bates here with the Final Cut Bro. Today we're going to be covering how to do sky replacements. Now I'll show you the original clip here. And the sky is pretty grayed out. But what I would like to do is add in a sky coming in behind the rocks. So this is what our final product should hopefully look like at the end of this tutorial. You'll just see this really cool time lapse sky going on behind it. And then I also created a nighttime version with these really nice stars and such in the background. Now my aim with this tutorial is to make it look more realistic rather than stylistic, um, even though I am using a time-lapse sky. Um, I just want the colors to really match with the scene rather than trying to draw attention to the, uh, the fake sky. So there are other tutorials if you want something more stylized, but today we are gonna be aiming for realism. With all that being said, let's go ahead and get started. The first thing we're gonna wanna do is actually duplicate this layer. So push option, click and drag upward. Then we're going to add a mask effect. So go ahead and come to your effects panel and just look up draw mask and that will give us the mask we need. Next, we are just going to do a really rough cutout of the areas that we want to um, keep. And what's important is that we don't select any part of the ocean here because we're gonna add a key and that will delete anything that's white in the ocean. So it will look um, a little jarring and weird. So we're just gonna try and use this mask to fix that. And once you get to the ocean, just stick pretty close to this horizon line. Next, we are going to just click up and around the top portion here. And we should have a completed mask now. And if I disable this bottom layer, we'll see our mask there. After that, we're gonna actually duplicate this layer one more time, click and drag that to the top. Select your middle layer and go over here to your draw mask properties and click invert mask. And now if I disable this, we'll see that the mask is completely reversed to the top element here. Okay, so now we can do the part where we get the rock isolated away from the sky. So go ahead and select your very top layer, come down to your effects panel and look up the Luma key here. Click and drag that onto your top element and we can actually disable the bottom two layers by selecting them both and then pushing B to disable. Select your top layer and we are just gonna click and drag these sliders here until the rock is completely black. And then we're gonna drag the white slider until the sky is as close to completely white as we can get without losing um, other details. What this Luma keyer is telling us is that anything the black will be deleted, anything that is white will remain. So what we're gonna actually wanna do is flop the selection. So come on down here to the invert button and check that. And now we can see that our rock is here. You can also, if you're not happy with the um, with your mat, you can actually drag the fill holes buttons and see that takes out the sky there. And you can set your edge distance. Um, I'm gonna keep that at zero. You can set your shrink and expand. And I do actually recommend that you shrink this by one pixel. And uh, funny enough, Dragging to the right actually shrinks, dragging to the left expands. So it's actually opposite of whatever is stated here. And then we can soften this by one pixel too, maybe. Actually, that might be too much. So do 0.3 there. It's very, very subtle, but it'll just help clean up the edges a little bit. So now is the time for us to add in um, our sky. So if I enable that, let's see if we have any edge problems here. So we actually have some seam problems. So let's go ahead and fix that real quickly. So let's actually drag this up on top. There we go. Okay, that fixed it. So I actually dragged the middle layer up to the top and that seemed to fix our seam issues. Um, so yeah, I'm just kind of troubleshooting this with you so that you can get an idea of the process. Let's go ahead and add in our sky. So I'm gonna push Command Control one and that will open up our browser over here. And we are gonna drag our time-lapse sky here down to under the top two layers. And already it's actually doing a pretty good job. The problem is, is that our sky is exceedingly vibrant blue and doesn't match 
the um, general look of our video underneath. So we're gonna fix that. And it's really honestly very simple. We're just gonna be using a blend mode. So come up here to your blend modes and we're gonna set this to screen. And this is automatically going to make it look very, very realistic. Um, honestly, the sky looks very much in place uh, where it should be. One more thing we could do is let's go ahead and select our cloud layer and we're gonna add a graduated mask. Okay, so when I add this graduated mask, um, it's actually adding this nice gradient look to our, our video. And we're doing this to kind of mimic what a real horizon looks like uh, in real life. So it oftentimes near the horizon, it's a lot hazier. So we're just trying to mimic that look a bit in real life. So um, we add a very slight horizon and it just implements it into the scene a little bit more realistically. We can then push command six on our cloud layer and that will bring up our color correction area up here or you can add it from the effects panel. And we can mess with our shadows and our highlights to just really get it to pop a little bit more against the sky. But it's already looking much better. Um, it isn't, you know, a really vibrant sky, but it does look like it's actually there. And I think for this particular scene, that's a little bit more important. Now, one last thing I would like to do is the sky is actually higher quality than whatever this camera was shooting. So to fix that, we're gonna actually have to down res our sky a little bit. So we are going to come down to our, fil our filters and we're gonna add a Gaussian blur. And this is gonna be very subtle. We're gonna do by one pixel. And then we're gonna add a sharpen filter. And this is just to match the sky to the look of the, um, the original video. So it's not the prettiest thing in the world, but it does make it look much more realistic because it's matching whatever the camera was shooting. And I think honestly, that's what's more important with effects is matching the camera more than, um, than trying to make it look as pretty as possible. So sometimes you just gotta really ruin your footage to make it look good. So let's go ahead and add um, a handheld filter to this whole thing. So click and drag over everything and push option G or right click and do new compound clip. Now all of that is in one easy to use layer. We can come down to our effects panel. We'll just type in handheld. And there's the base stock handheld uh, filter that you can use from Final Cut Pro if you like that. Or um, I also have created a, a preset pack of real handheld motion. Um, I'll have a link in the description to that. And we'll just drag the smoothness slider up, disable rotation, and now we'll just give it a play and see how realistic it's looking. And I would say it's looking pretty good. It looks pretty well implemented into the scene. Now let's just slap a, a let on here because I want to take the time to grade because I'm lazy. Explore let pack, orange dolphin looks good. Um, you could add grain over the top, do whatever you need to really implement it within the scene. So let's say we want to turn this into a nighttime scene. Well, go ahead and open up your compound clip. And we're just going to drag in this Milky Way photo I got off of pixabay.com. We will go ahead and disable our cloud layer, select our star layer, and come up to our blend modes here and set it to um, let's actually do add instead of screen this time. And then we are going to select our all of our day elements. So the bottom layer, middle layer, and top layer. And we're gonna look up day into night. And this is just a stock effect built into Final Cut Pro. Or you can color grade it if you are good at grading. And it's already starting to implement a little bit better. Let's go ahead and come to our star layer and we're going to add a curves effect to it color curves open that up in the grade area and now because this has a blend mode on it anything that's dark will be deleted anything that's light will come through a little better so we can use that to really implement it within the scene so let's go ahead and bring down some of the stars so there's there's just a few less and it looks a little bit more realistic 
and we can play around with the highlights, get those implemented a little better into the scene. And that's looking pretty good. Now let's go ahead and add a graduated mask to this and get that horizon line going just for added realism. We can really stretch this out. And voila, we have realistic stars in our sky. So now if we come back here with the grade, it actually looks pretty good. So we can play through and it looks like those stars are actually in the sky. And uh, yeah, I would say that looks pretty good. You could also get like a video version of the stars that are twinkling or something for added um, effect. Or you could throw in this, the cloud layer over the top and set a blend mode on that. And that might make it look a little bit more unique and interesting. So hopefully this was helpful. Um, just really subtle sky replacements just to add a little bit more to your scene uh, without being overly stylized and drawing too much attention. So if this tutorial was helpful, consider subscribing. I have brand new tutorials every single Wednesday. Um, also, if you wanna get this free handheld plug-in pack, there's a link in the description to that. And push the like button if this was helpful. Um, it does help my channel out a lot and I really, really do appreciate that. Also, if you have any questions, hit me up down in the comments and I will answer those to the very best of my abilities. Thank you guys so much for watching and I can't wait to see you next week.